Greetings from Rye Universe. This is J. Douglas Barker. The book is titled The Symphony of Profound Knowledge. And joining me is author Edward Martin Baker. Sir, welcome to the program. Thank you. This is a, a, a book of 330 pages. Your background is not specifically as an author. It's not something you started out in life to pursue. You are writing really about the writings or the inspiration of W. Edwards Deming. He was a, a leader. I have posted or put down these words to perhaps describe him. His interest, his background was music, management, and mentoring. Would that be a good descriptive? That's pretty good as a summary. And who was Edwards Deming? Edwards Deming was born in 1900. Uh, He had education in statistics and mathematics and engineering and physics. Uh, He got a Ph.D. from Yale, by the way. Hmm. Um, He came to the attention of uh, America uh, during the 1980s when, uh, as people may recall, there was an awful recession here, particularly in the automotive industry. Correct. And uh, there was a, a hour and a half documentary on NBC called uh, "The uh, If Japan Can, Why Can't We?" And about one third of that show, uh, produced by Claire Crawford Mason, was given to Deming and how he had helped the Japanese after World War II regain their economic uh, strength. So of course he began to get all these calls from uh, managers in different companies, including Ford, and. He needed to be convinced that Ford management was serious because it would involve quite a commitment. Finally, in October of 1980, a number of Ford executives visited him, and I guess they convinced him to visit Ford. He began a relationship with Ford in January 1981 when he went up to the boardroom and basically read them the riot act. He said, if you're serious about improving quality and uh, increasing sales, uh, you should change your way of thinking and, and managing And uh, And it it all started from then. For for disclosure, you were an executive with Ford at the time. Yes, I was with Ford for 20 years. I finally ended up uh, in the quality office. And, in fact, in February of 1981, I wasn't yet in the quality office, but uh, I went to a a meeting that Deming attended, and afterwards I spent some time with him and told him about my interest in improving quality of of products. And um, next thing I knew... I was in the quality office. You not only were in the quality office, but you had and struck up a long, lifelong relationship, at least from that point forward, to to Mr. Demings. Very fortunate, yes. Uh, I participated at Ford in some outside uh, seminars with him, 70 to my count. And um, the last few years of uh, my time at Ford, uh, I managed his relationship with Ford, his interaction, his scheduling, and so on. But I got to spend a lot of time with him and knew him very well. How did he? How did he approach life? Obviously, he was a brilliant man. He he was uh, involved in music, and I uh, noted in reading some of your book passages that he had uh, scored the uh, a new score for the Star Spangled Banner to optimize a wider range of singers. Uh, I would be probably included in that. I'm a bass singer when I sing. Uh, how how is it that he had such a wide ranging interest, everything from the creative to the practical? Well, that's that's the genius of the man. Um, he uh, he was a talented person in so many respects. He was a music theorist first of all. So uh, he, I guess he sung in church, and he he just had uh, all these uh, these influences. He appreciated he appreciated culture very much. You know, he used to visit Japan. Uh, from the 1950s onward. Well, he started there in 1946. He was brought over with the General MacArthur's Reconstruction Group, and uh, he got to meet some of the Japanese, and uh, he ended up giving seminars there, and he kept being invited back. In fact, they, they did create something they call the Deming Prize. They still have it today for companies and individuals that exceed in quality. So he had many visits to Japan, and he, he used to write about the culture. In one of his visits, he discusses um, the beauty of the way they make noodles. And he <laughs> had two pages devoted to that. Really? So he was very interested in culture and very interested in human relationships. A fascinating person, obviously. This is not really a biographical sketch necessarily of Mr. Deming, though. The subtitle on this talks about the score for leading, performing, and living in concert. You have really approached this as a business uh, 
uh, uh, what's the word? Primer, I guess, would be a, a word that's used in the in the distant past. But it's a book that can be a reflective look at business and general lifestyle, uh, growing in uh, becoming more effective at what you do. Yes, thank you for that summary. It's exactly right. Uh, I think he was misunderstood in the scope of his knowledge and what he was trying to accomplish. In the 80s, he was categorized as the father of total quality management, and he really didn't like that. It was quite a narrow category. Uh, He tried to improve not only business and mainly through creating leaders, but relationships in all organizations within and without. Very much concerned with human relationships. He was a very spiritual individual, even though he was trained in engineering and physics. And... uh, his whole aim was to get people to work together for the greater good because he saw one, if they achieved the greater good, they would be helping themselves. All through his life, his teaching really came from something he didn't, he didn't articulate until later on. It was called profound knowledge. Mm-hmm. He finally put it all together in the late 80s, and he called what he was teaching profound knowledge, which was a different mental map for, for, for understanding systems. Um, he, he wanted people in all walks of life and in management to understand that they are part of, although he didn't use the term, part of an ecology, and that everything was related, and everything you did had consequences, and you should understand those consequences. Now, Dr. Deming was a profound teacher and uh, leader. He forged a relationship with you and asked you to share that information with the world. Now, is it also true that he did not personally write any books or there no books that he uh, penned personally? Well, first he wrote many books on sampling uh, up through the 1940s and early 50s. He was the world's leading authority on sampling. Right. But then, uh, as he began to get renowned in the, uh, in the late 70s in the U.S., uh, he began to write books. He wrote two major books. Uh, that were quite different from his earlier books. The books, uh, they were books for, for management, uh, were quite popular. One, the first one, which was published in 1986, was called Out of the Crisis. And then he had a second one in uh, 1993 and uh, was republished after his death in 1994. So um, he did write two major books that really were the primary influences on, um, on management. Before then, there were more technical books on sampling and statistics. He was also, one of his major contributions to society was his teaching about variation and that understanding how things vary, whether it be in manufacturing or any organization, can help a person distinguish between local effects, those that just occur occasionally, and effects that are performance that are due to a system that are beyond the control of the individual. This is why he, he, he was really upset when employees were blamed for everything that went wrong, when in fact people did not, management did not have the, the knowledge, profound knowledge, to look at the system and see where the system was contributing, whether it be defective parts by a supplier or primarily the human resource management system which uh, demotivated and dismayed many employees through their systems of rating and ranking and grading. Yeah, he, he approached you and asked you to write about his teachings and about his perspective. Do you think it's because he felt you could convey that to the common man, perhaps, better than he? Well, I was shocked when he first asked me to write a book, and then he continued to ask me to write, and I kept telling him that, I would just re- be repeating what I learned from him. He said, no, no, Ed, you, it would be your perspective, and people need to see things from different perspectives. Well, I struggled with that for many years after he passed away, and I finally came to realize that I, I had something to say that would put his teaching and put the man in a, in a different perspective, and that would be in the context of his, uh, his music. That would be the framework, the structure for his theory of profound knowledge. Incredible idea. Now, Dr. Deming was a unique person, obviously. Did you keep notes that were contemporaneous uh, with with your relationship with him, or how did you how did you put all of these uh, diversified facts and and ideas together? I did uh, make notes. Uh, 
plus I have correspondence from him. But every time he he said something I hadn't heard before, I did I did write it down. Hmm. In fact, I even have that index card from 1988 when he said, "Ed, you've got to write that book." Plus, of course, <laughs> he did so many seminars, which uh, some can be accessed on the uh, the Deming Institute, Deming.org, uh, which is now run. The executive director is his uh, grandson, Kevin, and. Um, yeah, I did that. I had a whole file of ideas, and I also combined them with, with some of the other teachings of system thinkers that people knew about, such as Russell Lakoff, who was a good friend of Dr. Deming's. In reading the book, the, 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 the reader, are they going to be able to understand the basic concepts? Uh, did you approach this on a, what I'd call a very personable and simple uh, approach, or what was the underlying way that you, uh, you approached this subject? Uh, I try to make it non-technical and personable and humorous when it re- reflected Dr. Deming's humor. Yeah, I try to make it quite conversational. Um, so, uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's very digestible, I believe. Well, how would you describe it? Who's your audience? Uh, who's going to benefit the most from this? Is this something that everyday guy that uh, maybe punches a clock, nine to five, is going to find some nuggets of truth in there, or is this management only? Everyone, everyone, every human being who is interested in their life and the way they're living and the people around them should appreciate this book. You mentioned uh, people that work every day. Yes. The, fi- the best, the, se- the seminar that, he used to conduct these four-day seminars. And, and one time we arranged for um, him to do the seminar for union employees that worked for Ford. And so we had hundreds and hundreds of people from the plants. And he would give his lecture, and then there would be, a, after two hours, there would be a short break. And people didn't move. They didn't run out the door for coffee. Mm. It turned out that he was telling them how they were living and all the problems they were facing that weren't their problems but were system problems. And he, he really moved them. He really moved them emotionally, and he told me later that that was the finest seminar he ever gave and the most meaningful one to him. He he was a, a stage performer also for, from some de, from some perspectives. Talk about his performance on stage, Doctor Deming. You talk about the red bead demonstration. What was that, and and how did it impact people? That was a simulation of a production process where uh, he called people up from the audience. Some would be uh, production. Uh, operators and some would be inspectors and they would sample from a, a bowl of beads and he would tell them now the red beads are def- defects and the white ones are okay I want you I'm sending an objective here that you don't pick any defective uh-huh. if you pick a defective you'll be fired well of course the process was a random sampling a mechanical sampling process and they couldn't avoid picking red beads but he would fire those who picked a certain number of red beads showing that people would be punished and fired for things they had no control over. Hmm. And he demonstrated which things were random variation and which were in their control by developing a control chart and um, showed through the theory of variation how we mismanage and that if somebody wanted to be a good manager of people, they must understand how things vary. And it's not just in production, it's in any organization, from health care and education, uh, you name it, it applies, because it's universal. And you've used the music analogy in order to weave all of these stories and ideas together. Yes, I, I wanted a structure that would do that. I didn't want to just repeat uh, his structure for the system of profound knowledge, which had four components, uh, Theory of knowledge, theory of variation, knowledge of psychology, and uh, what's the fourth one? Good, good question. I don't know that I've gotten that far in the book. This is uh, this is a wonderful read, though. It it does uh, personalize and uh, humanize someone that was very uh, complex in his uh, personal and emotional makeup, and also a tremendous leader. Is there any other books in the marketplace that? Uh, cover not only Dr. Deming, but others uh, or this philosophy in the way that you have? I don't think so. I certainly referenced a lot of books and cited a lot of authors and philosophers. Uh, if there's one 
one scholar, a management consultant that I would recommend would be the late Dr. Russell Acoff. He's a genius. Uh, I had the opportunity to spend time with him both at Ford and and in, in venues outside of Ford. Uh, I would certainly recommend reading Russell Acoff's work. What is it about Dr. Deming's work that you feel makes it relevant today? Again, his, his philosophy deals with how we relate to each other in organizations and in life. He was very much concerned not only with the material success of organizations, but with the spiritual success. Uh, he was a very spiritual man, a religious man, who presented a way of living that is timeless. In other words, people would say, well, you know, he was popular in the 1980s and uh, he's no longer relevant. But he's more relevant today, given the economic situation the world is facing, than he was in 1980. People like Deming don't come along very often. There's something for everyone. So even though he was born in 1900 and uh, passed away, I guess, in the late 80s or early 90s, you obviously feel his contribution remains timeless. Yeah, absolutely. We know there are philosophers that lived hundreds of years ago and actually religious leaders that we still get tremendous knowledge from, and I think he was one of those. For anyone that is in business or wants to be in business and be successful in life, this is a book that they should get. The title, again, is The Symphony of Profound Knowledge, W. Edwards Deming's score for leading, performing, and living in concert. You've also described him as a moral philosopher, a prophet, virtuoso, and sage with profound insights into the management organizations and the art of leadership and living. That's a mouthful, but it also does describe your book beautifully. 330 pages, sir. Where can my listeners get a copy? Of this through Amazon or any other online bookstore and uh, through the Deming Institute Deming.org or through Aileron I, I should mention of course that Aileron whose chairman is Clay Mateel whose president is Joni Fetters who he founded Aileron in 1996 to educate pretty much owners of private companies and he created this institute which is now outside of Dayton Ohio it's a magnificent campus and Clay appreciated Deming's teaching and is trying to include his teaching not only in the way he manages Aileron, but in what he teaches the people that come to learn from Aileron. It wouldn't have gotten done if they didn't uh, provide that support. So um, I very much appreciated their help. Book could be ordered through Aileron. All through through Aileron. Aileron. And that is spelled A-I-L-E-R-O-N for those who are doing a search online. Thank you, sir, for joining me and uh, sharing the story of Dr. Deming and your work that you have uh, completed, the title of which is The Symphony of Profound Knowledge. They can also do a search under your name, Edward Martin Baker, the author, and find out about this and other works that you may uh, pen in the future. Thank you for joining me today. Thank you very much, Jay. Appreciate that. My pleasure. For iUniverse, this is Jay Douglas Barker.